Every Tuesdays in the second hour of the program, we find out what's happening in Korean culture and entertainment here on All About K. And as always, we have our entertainment reporter, Gina, joining us in the studio. Gina, hello to you. Hello. Gina, let's talk about this interesting trend. Yes. Uh, there's always these <laughs> new trends that I have to try to keep up with. But this one I actually uh, happened to uh, read about uh, not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Korean grandmas or h a l m e s are uh, trending these days. What's going on here? That's right. So these days, you know, we're putting K in front of a lot of things for things that are very unique to Korea. That's right. We have K-pop, K-food, K-hanbok. We're known for speeding up things. So we we say (laughs) K-speed. And now we have K-halme, K-grammas. Okay. And this is very interesting because actually the millennial and the Z generations, they are finding retro vibe something hip. And when we say retro, it goes all the way back to our grandma and grandpa generations. Mm -hmm. And reflecting this trend, a TV program has been created where Korean grandmas get to greet their foreign grandchildren for about two nights and three days. Oh, wow. Getting acquainted with each other, teaching each other about uh, one another's culture. And... It, during which time a lot of unique Korean grandma stuff are coming out. Right. Mm. Wow. Okay. So because again, you know, you're so you're talking about uh, grandchildren who are overseas. Right. And they get to hang out with their grandmas who are in Korea. Right. But they're not actually blood related. We're just oh, matching them up artificially. Okay. 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 Right. So oh. they're strangers, but they get to be grandmother and grandchildren for for a few days. I'm assuming a lot of this happens like on the countryside. Mm. Yes, where they're course. experiencing, like I guess, the Korean countryside and things like that, and all the uh, things that happen. But see, the thing that I'm curious about mm-hmm. is how are they communicating? Because number one, you're talking about these uh, overseas Korean kids who may not be so fluent in Korean, and right. then you have uh, the Korean grandmothers who probably speak a little to no English, mm-hmm. right? So they speak their own language. Korean <laughs> grandmas speak Korean, <laughs> foreign grandchildren speak English, but they somehow. make it work so for instance the first episode this of this program we had a korean grandma who's 86 years old living in k u m s a n chungcheongnamdo and she greeted kevin from america and they just spoke in their own language but they somehow communicated because you know feelings work yes yes that is true and i liked how they had some lost in translation moments Okay. So that was also fun. Like, for example, she would say p a t e meaning you got to go to the farm right, and get right, some right. potatoes for a snack. And he thought it, she was talking about a party. p a t e gaja, all right. Party. So he party. was getting dressed in his fancy clothes. And she asked him, well, why are you getting dressed up? We're going to the farm. This is, good. This is a pretty good show idea. And I think last right. week we were just talking about how Korea comes up with these very interesting reality TV shows or mm-hmm. entertainment shows. Uh, This is very unique, to say the least. Um, But what kind of things can we expect to learn from these uh, (laughs) K-grandmas? So all these typical grandma things, first of all, they feed their grandchildren all throughout the day with all sorts of Korean food. And because uh, the grandchildren are visiting the grandma's hometowns, they get to help her out with her chores, goes to the local market, and keeps eating. (laughs) Because <laughs> that's what grandmas do. So there's a lot of Korean food. You know, whatever country you may be from, oh, uh, there's right. one thing that's in common with all grandmothers. Mm-hmm. They, they, they feed you well. They feed you well. I, you know, time to time <laughs> when I visit my grandmother down in the countryside and then, you know, I eat, I, I can't believe how much food, how much pop rice she puts on <laughs> right. the bowl. And she goes, you look famished. I'm like, how do I look famished? I'm like overweight right now. (laughs) They always think that you're so thin. Oh, Mm. this is incredible. Okay, so can you tell us about some of the other K-Hymans that are in the series as well? I'm kind of uh, curious to see who's out there. Right, so we have a grandma who will be pitching for a baseball game at the stadium. And another grandma will be taking care of four siblings from America. So every episode is very unique. And we have MCs, Jang Yoon-jung and Jang Do-yeon, talking through... the whole episode so that's also fun the commentary section is also very oh, fun oh these kids are not even Korean American they're just like full on yes, Americans yes they're just foreigners okay oh that makes sense alright alright l right. Oh, this is incredible this is a very very fun uh, topic out there and mind you it's funny because uh, even with, with some um, even you know 
Korean Koreans, they have right. a hard time understanding grandmothers <laughs> oh, right. uh, with their accents, uh, depending on where you're from. Mm-hmm. But uh, again, uh, another fun show that you guys could check out here. Uh, let's talk about our next piece of story here. Uh, speaking of Korean food and uh, how grandmothers, they cook always cook so well. Uh, we have news of a new pop-up Korean restaurant, but uh, run by guys from Finland. Finland. What? Okay, tell us about this. Okay, so remember the show, 어서와 한국은 처음이지? They had a lot. This episode, this TV show is about foreigners who've been living in Korea for a long time, mm-hmm. inviting their friends from their hometown. Right. And introducing what's good in Korea. Yes. So I, we've had guests from all around the world. Yeah, I've seen some episodes. I'm not a religious follower of this mm-hmm. uh, show, but I do know what this show is all about. Right. Have you seen the Finland episode? No. That's one of the most popular episodes ever. Is there a reason why? Because these people, when, when foreigners visit Korea, it's either that you get very awkward and anxious about mm-hmm. finding out the new culture. These guys adapted to Korea <laughs> so quickly. And because they fell in love with Korean food, the minute they started eating Korean food when they first arrived, mm-hmm. they raved about it. Like, it, it was just so insane. And after the show, they went back to their country and started cooking Korean oh. food. And one of them actually started to brew his own makgeolli because he got so into it. Wow. They they made kimchi with anything that they could find in Finland. Right. And their love for Korean food just persisted throughout the whole year, even after the show ended for them. And one of them actually got married to a Korean woman. What? I heard that she was his Korean teacher. So one of them actually started learning the language because he fell in love with Korean food. Man, Korean is the new language of love. <laughs> right. I'm telling you. I know. So they got invited back to Korea and now they're opening a pop-up Korean restaurant in Tegu. This is really remarkable because I know I have friends uh, here in Korea, uh, one from Australia, the mm-hmm. other one from Scotland, uh, and they're expats. And uh, they fell in love with makgeolli so much that they decided that they're going to do a joint business in creating a makgeolli business. And wow. they, they're actually successful now. Oh, is it already out? It's out. It's been out. Wow. And they even have uh, classes where they teach uh, people how to make makgeolli. And okay. uh, they have their own you know, branded makgeolli as well. And mm-hmm. so, again, there's just one's a straight one's from Scotland, so uh, not Koreans whatsoever. But w- with this pop-up restaurant, uh, these new restaurants that we're talking about, you know, food quality obviously must be guaranteed, right? right? So can you tell us a little bit more about this restaurant? Okay, so there's going to be a reality program uh, talking about the process of making this pop-up restaurant, how the guys are preparing their menu, how they're going to cook it, present it. And it, it will air July 8th. Mm-hmm. And the restaurant is going to be held in Tegu. And they've already started to take in reservations. But She's I already? think it's a little late for me to sign up because 30,000 people have already signed up to go to this restaurant. So, yes, it's going to be massively popular. Uh, 30,000 people. I, 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 <laughs> That's a long line. You know, I, I've tried, you know, there's a lot. Was a picture one? Yes. Every time when it comes out in the, uh, the Gormok Shikdang mm-hmm. and uh, people find out about these hidden restaurants right. and, you know, they try to go and you look at the line and you just give up. Mm-hmm. It happens all the time, ladies and gentlemen. Now you're telling me 30,000 people 30, signed up people. for this. But what is it about Korean food that got these uh, North European guys so hooked on? <laughs> I know. Well, one of them, the main Bilpu, who is the owner of this Papa restaurant, he okay. said he just gained six kilograms on his recent trip to Korea because he just eats Ate so much. everything Korean. He just loves it so much. Yeah. I think, and he doesn't really shy away from the spicy food. That's good, yeah. Yeah, so he's thoroughly enjoying all the Koreanness. You know, I remember uh, growing up in New York. I had a one of my best friends, uh, you know, you know, American kid and his family. I remember like he used to always come to my house and always ask for bulgogi, right? And mm. uh, you know, that's all he'll kind of ask with, okay. with a side of rice, and then. <laughs> You know, we lost touch, and then I decided to uh, visit him, his house, uh, for one last time before I came to Korea. Mm-hmm. And I go to his house, and then, uh, you know, he's like, go grab a beer or something, go to the fridge. And inside his fridge, he had bulgogi set up. Okay. He had kimchi. And then on the top of his uh, fridge was a box of Korean ramyun. And I was oh, like, what, wow. what's going on here, Steve? <laughs> and and uh, he's like, you know, I just remember eating all that stuff. You know, Korean food's great. 
you know, we have a hard time, you know, finding these Korean restaurants. So he mm. just goes to a Korean supermarket nearby and buys all this. And so good it, for him. It's good. It's tasty. Right. You know, it's it's, it's uh, and it's catching on even in Finland. And yes. Now they're set up a, <laughs> a restaurant uh, in Tegu here. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about some K-pop news here. Audition programs, obviously, always on every channel out there. But uh, something really different recently started, right? Okay. So we have Loud. That's the name of the program, which just aired last week. And is a collaboration between JYP and P Nation, run by Psy. Yeah. And it's interesting because these two companies, they are set out to pick their own boy bands, which are to launch after the show ends. And the first week's rating was around 9%, which is huge for a ground network. And what's different of about this show is we've had previous edition programs where a lot of companies are judging together. Right. But this one is uh, very special because these two companies, the judges are competing against each other to pick the best boys mm. out there. So it, the competition between JRP and Psy is also very interesting and fun to watch. Yeah, you know, uh, somehow through algorithms on uh, YouTube, uh, some of these uh, clips have popped up and, uh, you know, I was curious, wanted to check it out. And they have mm-hmm. the chairs, right? And they, they, you press the button, it's like level one, level two, level three, and then right. it goes them up. And I saw some really, really impressive kids. There was this uh, one young Japanese kid. Even a Japanese kid came over to this show. And he's like about like 10 years old or something like that. One of the best dancers I've ever seen. So interesting show. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what's new and also special about this very show, though? So what I noticed about this show is, you know, in audition programs, you are supposed to prove yourself to be a good singer and a good dancer. Yeah. But in this show, it's not just about the talent per se. So they have two different stages where the participants get to perform to show off their skills. And another to show off their attraction points. So on stage, they can do whatever they want, which they will think will grab the audience's attention. So it's called 매령무대. Right, right. Which is very interesting. Yeah, which is why, okay, so that's the reason why. Again, I I didn't watch the full show. Mm -hmm. I only saw clips of this. But there was this one kid who's a uh, high school kid who decided to show his star quality by doing a presentation on on PowerPoint. So, oh, okay. Uh, let's just say his uh, you know his singing was far better than his presentation <laughs> skills. in itself. But yeah, it is very unique uh, here. Right. Uh, and, but yeah. Yeah, and it also marks twentieth anniversary of JYP's first Ground Network edition program, where I was on. 20 years ago. Yes, 20 years ago. I was on his very first reality audition program. That's right. And he's been running reality programs. He's been on a lot of audition programs. So oh. he's, he's been like personally handpicking talents all around the country I, what, what for was two ex- decades. What was the experience for you like then, back then? I mean, this was 20 years ago when you were, you know, very, very young, right? Right, and it was one of the very first audition programs. So the right. format itself was completely new to everyone watching and participating. So it was... It was a whole new experience. We were just lined up in front of a huge stadium, getting our numbers oh, on our geez. chests and going in and singing and dancing. Yeah, I remember I thought when I was in high school, it would be funny for me to audition for, uh, what was it? Uh, what's that uh, audition program back in the U.S. where William Hung? Not American Amer- Idol. American Idol, there right. you go. I remember American Idol. I wanted to audition for it, not because I'm a good singer, but I just want to make a fool of myself. <laughs> but it's... Why didn't you? Because the 90% of the difficulty is actually waiting online for that long line. Yes. And so I said to myself, no way. I never want to be an American Idol. So (laughs) I'm just trying to make a fool out of myself. But (laughs) for our listeners out there, uh, do check out Gina's uh, YouTube channel. And she she covers a lot of these songs. And like, for example, for myself, uh, Havana. Yes. Havana. That was personally my favorite. And she does amazing covers out there. So do check it out. Again, uh, we quite interesting to see where these uh, which uh, participants go where. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I heard one of the important criteria of choosing which K-pop management to join is, of course, the quality of their company <laughs> cafeteria. I've seen pictures of this. Uh, it, this is real, right? They're amazing, right? You've seen yeah, the pictures. I've seen pictures. So for trainees who are very talented, they can pick the choice of their management. And I think a company cafeteria would be a good ca- uh, criteria because the food is important. It is very important. Uh-huh. And these management, some companies are putting in a lot of effort 
to get good food out there for the staff and the talent. No, legitly. Uh, if you see the pictures of some of the foods that came, and I think there was a show a long time ago, uh, not too long ago, I should say, where they go about checking out the cafeteria food for all the companies out right, there. Right, right. Like some of the major corporations, mm-hmm. and they also go to the entertainment companies. Right. And uh, they look good. Right. This- I think, personally, my favorite would be Hybe. Oh it's my the goodness, they would open. be good. <laughs> I mean, Hitman Bang is known foodie. Yeah. He's very serious about his food. And I saw a lot of photos where the company cafeteria charges 2,000 Korean won, which is less than $20. No, less than $2? That's less than $2. Right. And the quality of food is unbel- It's out of this world. <sighs> You know, okay, so granted, though, I just want to put it out there. Uh, the cafeteria food here in Arirang, it's it's not bad. It's pretty right, good. Right, it's good. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then in the morning, they have the best ramyeon ever. If you ask them for ramyeon, oh, they have the I've best ramyeon. Oh, I've never had the ramyeon. <laughs> it's really good. I should check it out. But I think that some of the ones that uh, really came out, uh, I remember it was in the spotlight. For example, like YG has... YG has good cafeteria. I mean, there. I remember an episode on Infinite Challenge, Muhan Dojan, mm-hmm. where the members would just raid YG cafeteria yeah, just to yeah. get a good lunch. Okay, so another going back to, again, when you, know, you were a trainee... Right. It, was it under J- it was JYP? It was JYP, yes. Uh, how was the food back then as a, as a trainee? Not, it can't be like nowadays, right? We didn't even have a cafeteria. <laughs> we had a lot of restaurants near the company that okay. were affiliated with the management. So we would just go and eat and we would have like a monthly register book okay. and the company would pay for it. But it wasn't, you know, delicious. It was just regular kimbap. But the thing, is, what's what's uh, what I'm curious about mm-hmm. is I know with especially with the idol groups, right? Uh, one of the things that uh, the management company does is they try to manage their weight, right? But the food looks so good. I, I, I mean, like, what happens? Are you not allowed in, <laughs> in the cafeterias? What happens? I don't know. For for the trainees of today, I guess they have a special, you know special menu yeah. f- to manage their weight or special portions. But for JYP, I heard that JYP Cafeteria right now, not before, they have organic menu. It's an organic cafeteria. JY is really big on eating healthy. So I guess JY trainees won't have that much of a difficult time <laughs> trying to manage their weight. I wonder if uh, JYP is willing to sign me. Uh, I'm not a singer, but if they're willing to <laughs> sign English broadcasters, uh, you don't have to pay me much. Just let me into the cafeteria. <laughs> Wait, only the people of the company can right. go to the cafeteria, right? That's, so you can't yes. just be like, I want to pay 2001 no. and then go to the high Nuh-uh. cafeteria. No. All right. Mm. But you are allowed to go to the bakery. So Hybe recently opened Bang & Baker's Bakery. Because he's very serious about baking. And he actually said if BTS failed, he was going to launch an egg tart store. That was his actual dream. But BTS happened. And now he has the egg tart store. I'm assuming. Wait, 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 wait. I'm assuming because their latest single butter was such a hit. Did they Hmm. do anything with butter with their baking? They made butter cookies, which sold out in two seconds. Oh, right. That's right. Right. That was the the BTS goods that Mm -hmm. they were uh, selling, right? Yeah. So they have a whole bakery shop where you, you can just go as a regular customer. Man, if anyone has access to any of these cafeterias and would like to invite me, I, again, I've only seen photos of this, but uh, they look good. they're amazing. Right. All right. There you have it, Gina. Always uh, fun, fun topics that you brought in. But for a change, I'm actually very hungry now after talking <laughs> to you. Too. Stay safe, Gina. Looking forward to talking to you again next week. See you next week. You can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application, or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Korea time.